Good morning once again, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Probably um, Moscow has a business season and the traffic jams are still as great as they are, and that is why Timur Maximov, one of our speakers, is a little bit late, and he will, I believe that we will start, and he will join us during our panel discussion. I, I'm happy to welcome you at the Moscow International Financial Forum, which celebrates its fifth anniversary. It's a very big event for the financial industry in general and for the economy of the Russian Federation. I believe that this day will be full of discussions, useful information, and you will learn a lot. And I would like to thank organizers of this event for invitation. My name is Alexander Kudrin. I'm Chief Microeconomist and Depth Market Strategist at TON LLC, and I'm the moderator of this panel discussion. Debt sustainability of the entities of the Russian Federation, trends and prospects. Budgets, sustainability. Budgets of different level is very topical due over the last couple of years. And I would like to emphasize once again that we are not talking only about regional budgets, but we are talking about sovereign countries, about budgets of the states. Why? I believe that it's not necessary to explain the reasons. The, the pandemic happened and the economy stopped, which happened in the uh, happened last year, second and third quarter, and the incomes decreased, expenditures raised because we had to fight the pandemic. We have to compensate slowing down of economy and its delay its and which led to deficits of budgets both regional and states and of course the debt burden also increased and it's a trend this burden grows over the world it's not only for russia and this new reality financial world has to live during the pandemic of course, there were some emergency measures of support provided by different organizations, by different budgets of a lower level. If we talk about the global level, we can remember the uh, International Monetary Fund program, which distributed allocated uh, 650 billion dollars within the frameworks of uh, the loan programs for some states, which will help for some countries and not helpful for others. The Russian Federation adopted the program of uh, providing a preferential interest rate for loans, which helped us to survive during these difficult times. But now we have to say that the pandemic is uh, something that we have, but we are returning back to normal life. And of course, all these anti-crisis extraordinary measures becoming our past and the borrowers different budgets have to recognize new reality and find their place in this new financial paradigm and the key problem here is as i have already mentioned that the debt burden increased how to live with that how to build your relations with the markets this is the most topical question which the governments face at different levels in the Russian Federation, we also have some new problem, and it's a great challenge for us. This agenda, new agenda, trends it to carbon neutrality, which can cost a lot to many budgets, and we have to live with that. We have to invent efforts to meet this challenge and to avoid financial problems. These are the topics which are on our agenda, and I would like to introduce the speakers. We have great speakers here. From left to the right, we see Alexey Rudenko, Vice President, Deputy Head of the Department Market of Gazprom Bank. Yelena Nisimova, Senior Director, Head of the Regional Rating Group, Analytical Credit Rating Agency, uh, which is uh, known as ACRAM. We have Timur Maximov, Deputy Minister of Finance of the Russian Federation. We have Maria Bagreva, Deputy Chief of Staff, Moscow Mayor and Government. And under current realities, we have mixed format. We have the fifth speaker. Don't be surprised, he's not sitting here at the table. David Knight, lead economist for the Russian Federation, Macroeconomics and Financial Management, World Bank. 
And I would like to start with David, giving the floor to David. And uh, probably you could show him. Yes, we can see him. David, good afternoon. It's wonderful that you can hear us, uh, David, and uh, regarding the you uh, very new person for Russia because you were appointed recently. And I would like to ask you some general question. What are the key risks for the federal and regional budgets to your point of view in the post-pandemic period? Uh, could you please um, a little bit dwell on this topic? Some slides to share. Would you like me to put them up? Yes, please. Wonderful. Well, um, first of all, let me say thank you very much for having me at this um, at this event, uh, the fifth anniversary, uh, and it is my first uh, Moscow Financial Forum, um, and it's a privilege and an honor to provide some uh, remarks uh, to you today uh, to this uh, esteemed audience and amongst uh, this great panel. Um, as you rightly mentioned, um, I am the, uh, the incoming lead economist for the Russian Federation uh, for the World Bank, uh, and very much incoming. I have uh, arrived in, in Moscow just in the, uh, in the last week, and I look forward to uh, many years um, of working with, uh, with uh, you and, uh, and colleagues um, in the audience. Uh, I will make some, uh, as you said, some broad, broad remarks. Um, I have some slides um, against these um, and providing um, a bit of a broader picture, some global issues, general issues, ec economic and social issues facing Russia, and a bit of a mix of the longer and the shorter term view. Thank you. So, um, the uh, global outlook, uh, according to the latest projections of the bank, uh, and I think uh, most other uh, market commentators, uh, show that uh, uh, the world is set to see an exceptionally strong uh, recovery. Yet the recovery is, is uneven uh, in several respects across the world, um, uh, especially depending on the, um, the rate at which countries are able to, uh, to manage and mitigate the ongoing uh, threat of COVID, uh, as well as um, several other uh, country-specific factors, um, including, you know, the uh, commodity price uh, trends and recent uh, uptick in, in commodity prices. Uh, High-frequency uh, indicators reveal um, possible changes to this forecast, which was um, conducted uh, a couple of months ago. For instance, uh, we're now seeing that the EU uh, uh, could prove to uh, be uh, more robust uh, this year due to stronger performance of services, um, as you see, uh, sort of it, it indicated by the uh, PMI uh, uh, for services on the bottom left there. The World Bank's uh, current standing um, uh, forecast for uh, growth in, in Russia this year is, is 3.2%, but we are uh, likely to re revise it upwards as well. Um, uh, at present, consensus forecasts, I believe, stand at around 4% uh, for this year. Uh, and, and we may, uh, in the forthcoming forecast round, upgrade to somewhere in that region. Um, and with the output gap uh, projected to close uh, in 2022, uh, we expect the economy, uh, uh, the Russian uh, uh, Federation's economy, to return towards trend growth um, of about 1.7 to 2 uh, percent. So, um, I just want to take a short step back in time to present a couple of pictures on the longer, uh, longer view uh, before coming uh, back to recent developments and challenges, if I may. Um, and this is this is first to to present some of the uh, trends of longer term growth uh, um, in Russia's 80 plus uh, regions, um, and this is uh, one uh, 
uh, slide to illustrate the mixed story on convergence uh, to date. Um, here we see the um, region's share of uh, uh, gross domestic products alongside um, the change in share over the last 20 years. Um, and overall, the picture does not show convergence. There, there are some standout regions such as Moscow and major oil producers uh, that have continued to grow uh, from an already strong position, of course. But abstracting from these exceptional performers, um, you do actually you do see an underlying convergence, albeit um, relatively modest, uh, where regions that have started off smaller as a share of uh, national GDP uh, have grown faster. And moving to the uh, socioeconomic and specifically the poverty picture, um, over the longer term, we observe that regional differentials in poverty um, have remained high um, uh, while, while poverty uh, has increased in, in recent years. Um, as some of you may know, the uh, national poverty rate of the World Bank's international poverty line for upper middle income countries are estimated in different ways. Uh, and, and therefore these two charts uh, are not directly comparable, but they both show an overall uh, a similar picture over the last seven years um, to be an increase in, uh, in poverty. Um, and between uh, uh, 2013 and, and now, uh, poverty rates um, have increased in, in most regions. We, uh, we, we observe uh, 54 uh, regions. Um, and the gap uh, between uh, regions uh, who have the highest poverty and the lowest poverty rates um, has not declined, uh, which does not support uh, a story of convergence. Um, the gap at present, and uh, our latest estimate in 2019, is 28.5% between the, you know, the, the best performing and the least well performing region, which is just higher than the largest the gap observed in 2013 of 27%. Uh, so, re re and recognizing the need uh, for shared prosperity, Russia, uh, Russian Federation, of course, declared a national goal to halve poverty to 6.6% by 2030. Um, and th this illustrates uh, something of the, uh, the, the challenge uh, for the coming years um, uh, to, to achieve this goal. Moving uh, back now to uh, more recent developments, so the, um, uh, zooming in on the latest developments, um, we see that the twin shocks uh, of the last year um, of COVID-19 uh, and lower oil prices uh, disproportionately affected uh, different regions. Um, industrial production uh, mostly dropped for the resource extracting regions such as uh, Siberia and the Urals and auto producers uh, such as Volga and Northwestern, uh, whereas lockdown hit mostly large cities uh, uh, with a higher share of services. Um, and industrial production recovery so far this year uh, points to uh, the strongest performance uh, in those regions that were in fact less uh, adversely affected in 2020, especially the central uh, region. Turning to the fiscal angle, uh, and uh, this will be familiar to, to, to many or all, uh, the consolidated picture for the regions overall show uh, a move into a deficit position in the first half of 2020, as higher expenditure was called on to support the COVID response program. Uh, in 2020, the COVID crisis resulted in a budget deficit in um, 57 regions, um, significantly more than the year before, uh, contributing to a uh, estimated 18% rise in the debt of, of regions. Um, but the fiscal position has markedly improved uh, in the first half of this year, uh, especially with strong revenue growth, as we see here in the rightmost panel, uh, more than offsetting um, expenditure. So just to present um, uh, some further picture of regional um, debt uh, dynamics over uh, the last year or over 2020, 
uh, this is just to illustrate that those regions um, with a initially higher debt burden uh, going into COVID-19 um, tended to see larger increases. Um, although this is not the case um, for the regions uh, with uh, particularly high uh, gross regional product per capita as indicated by the larger bubble size um, uh, on the figure. And although stabilizing debt uh, has continued to increase somewhat in the first half of this year in, in um, overall uh, and in, in some regions, uh, we see a, a, a around 10 regions uh, still facing budget deficits and regional debt overall uh, rose by further 0.6% uh, compared to the end of, of 2020. So that's just a very quick uh, run through of some um, figures and, uh, and, and uh, perspectives from, from our side. Um, but I guess the important uh, set of questions uh, and which I look forward to um, uh, hearing the discussion about further as well is the challenges and risks on the horizon for um, the regions of, of Russia and for Russia overall. Um, well, what, what are, how would we characterize these challenges? Well, uh, there remain several key global and macro developments afoot, uh, which, which will have an important bearing on regions and call for policy attention. Um, and in some cases may in fact give rise to improved econo economic opportunities rather than only risks. Um, I will not attempt to completely as assess these prospects here. I think it's beyond the scope of my time allocation. Uh, but just to mention that the World Bank um, does have a suite of uh, growth, fiscal and debt diagnostics tools uh, that we use at the regional level to identify in more detail uh, these opportunities to raise growth uh, and support improved health of, um, of public finances uh, and debt management. Um, and for instance, the, the, the bank uh, in coordination with the authorities is, is, uh, is engaging with the Sakhalin region uh, to support their um, early planning uh, to transition to a carbon uh, a neutral reality. Um, as announced recently. Um, so back to the slide. Um, the first uh, point we would highlight, I think, is the, um, the full recovery from COVID-19, which maybe goes beyond simply the uh, epidemiological position, uh, which of course is uh, critical. Uh, but uh, beyond that, uh, the um, the um, after effects of the COVID-19 crisis um, uh, may give rise to, um, to policy issues, to scarring, potential scarring effects, which uh, require uh, call for attention. Uh, for instance, uh, some of our analysis suggests that um, even a short, less than half year a uh, gap in school attendance uh, for pupils could translate to an 18 uh, percentage point fall in PISA scores um, and unless remedied um, uh, estimated 2.5% lower earnings per year um, over a student's future working life. So uh, these of course are important issues to, to identify and, and address in the uh, education and, and remedial education system. Um, second, uh, the, the scale, predictability and timing of possible advanced economy monetary tightening, which could have repercussions on financial liquidity around the world and affect the investment climate, the investment environment and the overall economic outlook in Russia. Um, and this of course also pertains to the, um, the question of um, debt sustainability um, uh, and, and debt maintenance uh, costs across the board. Um, and third, the significant disruptions to the trade and GDC landscape um, in recent years have yet to settle down, I think we would say. Um, a recent World Bank report entitled COVID and the reshaping of GDCs um, presents several global scenarios uh, based on 
uh, large scale uh, macroeconomic analysis in this respect. Um, and I won't uh, dwell on the, uh, the different possible scenarios, but suffice to say that in a time of rearrangement, uh, there gives rise, uh, this gives rise to both risks and opportunities um, uh, for policymakers to be aware of. And we also think that there is an important role for regional economic development planning uh, in, in addition to um, national and federal um, planning to support one another. Uh, raising potential growth, of course, is a key national challenge, uh, but concerted act action at all levels could be most effective to support new drivers of growth. Um, key here, for instance, would be um, to help to engender a conducive and attractive environment to support increased investment uh, and productive uh, investment and business growth. Um, and uh, but uh, a major, uh, uh, let's say, disruptor to the status quo, which we think starts now and will become increasingly critical, is going to be the global green transition, uh, uh, w which is now gaining momentum, uh, both internationally and, and I know in, uh, in, in the minds of uh, policymakers and um, stakeholders in, in Russia. Um, the challenge, I, I, I think, really for regions is to have a forward-looking vision um, for their place uh, in, in what is likely to be a changing world. Um, and the World Bank is, um, is working uh, in Russia um, on um, uh, producing analytics to support uh, such planning. And the public sector, of course, has a very important role to play here. Um, and the capability of regional fiscal authorities to respond, uh, both in terms of the authority afforded to them um, uh, under, under the law and the resources that they may sustainably leverage to support transition, structural reform and, and economic growth uh, will be important. Um, and I, I, I stopped this slide with this, this figure, which uh, simply illustrates some of the, um, the impo these important dimensions for managing green transition, indeed managing any key structural transition. So that's all I have to say. So, and thank you very much uh, for your time, everybody. Thank you indeed for such a, uh, an overview of uh, the Russian economy and regional uh, economy and the the problems which we mentioned are extremely important and we will refer to it a bit later. Now I would like to ask uh, Timur Maximov uh, on the anti-crisis measures which were taken the last year. Mainly we are speaking about the budget cre uh, credits for 0.3%. Uh, th was this measure an anti-crisis measure? It will be a constant one. How do you evaluate the capacity of federal budgets to support regions and for their operations and debt market. Thank you so much. Good morning, dear colleagues. I would like to congratulate everybody who has uh, relation to the finances because it's a national holiday for that. That's a day of financial expert and we hope that it will be interesting as for the, I, w I would like to give some practical recommendations for our further work before I answer your question I would like to say that listening to David's uh, speech our topic was quite a narrow one depth sustainability of regions and supposedly we'll speak in some specific aspect uh, uh, speaking about uh, the federal uh, uh, level. Uh, David started, uh, started from a f uh, general overview and m macro view, and it's really uh, good that he started so. Uh, the depth sustainability uh, for regions is a selection uh, of uh, correct structure. It's a question of complex uh, relations uh, of subjects to f federation to the fiscal policy to define uh, proper uh, 
basis for that in the transfer to probably other regions. Unfortunately, we do not have sufficient time to uh, cover all these issues. Probably some sessions will um, refer to it, the regions of regions. And uh, David also said that relations with the federal budget is one of the key issues. Yes, I think it's one of the main issues because even on, on the slides which David showed, uh, there was seen how the uh, debt uh, was growing in the regions and it happened on the level of subjects. We have to take into account all the programs uh, which are anti-crisis programs, support of people, healthcare sector, support of enterprises on the background of the decreasing of fiscal sources which increases financial burden and debt burden which happened and this year we expect that there will be the growth and it will be a record and it will be something unprecedented that market segment where which we are going to discuss today will be will have unprecedented indicators on the bond market and shares market of the regions 2020 was a very difficult year pandemics which required financing which measures were proposed by the government we have the documents and by the president for the regions where the burden was higher than 25 percent we decided to use classical tool of interaction between region and the government refinancing of course uh, with a very low non-market interest rate it will be used for devilage and unloading of this specter which grew significantly in the past and it will be growing again this year this is one of the tools at the same time the region should increase their tax basis and manage this parameter of sustainability debt sustainability we need a second tool according to our information a number of entities have already signed such agreements so-called budget infrastructure loans which are targeted aimed at forming of own sources of financing and to provide predictability of the general situation with regional budgets and probably to decrease the need for borrowing for loans these two could be temporary or permanent. On the one hand, it's a temporary measure, but on the other hand, we understand that there is nothing more sustainable than something temporary. And it's not the first time when we apply this tool for to reduce the burden of the regions. My personal opinion is that we should not plan that taking into account the constant Tools. So these plans are not correct. We need to provide the long-term sustainable model where on the one hand tax and non-tax incomes have to allow entities to forecast successful development in the nearest future and on the other hand market funding sources which I believe we will discuss later bank loans have also to be part of this economy situation of this picture which we see regardless of the decisions made by the government of the Russian Federation if we provide loans it's good if not maybe we have another sustainable model that is why my offer is to take into account the self-financed model in the future thank you very much Timur and could I ask you a question you speak a lot uh, before we give the floor to Maria. We hear a lot about green bonds. Do you think that this tool is something, is, is something important for the future or it's just a trend, it's just a fashion? I believe that. It's fashion today, but probably it will be inevitable tomorrow. Thank you very much. Let's wait till tomorrow and see how inevitable it is. I would like to ask a question to Maria Bagreva. Timur said that market borrowings should become a reality for the region because it allows to build a long-term policy. Moscow, some time ago, some years ago, 
To be precise, eight years ago was a very active borrower on the market of, of on the bond market. Then there was a pause. Then pandemic started. Situation with the budget became even worse, and it's obvious that the choice of Moscow to return back to the bond markets. Moscow was not forced to do that, but new reality pushed Moscow to do that. I have two questions in this regard. Number one, was it difficult to go back to the bond market, taking into account that Moscow uh, volume is very, capacity is very big, 115 billion, and uh, were there any alternatives to bond issuing? Which options do you take into account? Alexander, thank you very much for your question. I would like to start with congratulations of all the participants of the forum on the day of financial work, uh, financial specialists. It's not an easy profession, and I wish you to keep working despite all the pandemics, despite all the impediments, and I wish you very good life and very good communication with your families. And going back to questions about borrowing, about budgets, about pandemic impacts. On the bond, on the borrowing bond market, loan markets, um, yes, as you said, we were not on the market because the budget of Moscow were executed and we had enough financing for our financial obligations and liabilities and to implement investment projects and programs. And the second reason is that we worked with budget structure during this year. We optimized current expenditures and we were growing the budget of development. First of all, it's investment program, re-equipment, refitting large-scale infrastructure projects. And it wasn't by chance because our key tasks are, of course, in the sphere of social policy, comfortable city for living, but also providing conditions for economic growth, which will be the basis of future tax income. That is why these years were years of development, and the budget is 40 percent. We have launched a lot of infrastructure projects which attract private investments, and also they create jobs. First of all, it's transport infrastructure, construction of new metro lines, all the transport connections all between cities which attracts new companies to work with us. And of course, the last year was not very easy for us. It influenced sustainability of Moscow budget. According to our assessments, evaluations, uh, we did not receive more than 250 billion. And uh, we had additional expenditures of 300 billion and in total, it's about 600 billion rubles, which is a significant amount for our budget. That is why last year, when we were planning the three-year budget, of course, we faced the question how to balance. What are the priorities? And within the structure of the budget, there are expenditures which will never be cancelled, social expenditures, everything related to the provision of conditions for city operation. That's why the question is, shall we continue our large-scale investment project? Shall we refuse to implement them, or shall we prolongate the terms and periods? We realized that the more we invest, the more private investment we attract, the more stable our income basis is. That is why we decided to enter borrowing loans market, we borrow, but the investment program will be implemented as it was planned in full. That is why this year we have a big volume of borrowing, about 400 billion rubles. And to your question, Alexander, was it difficult to come, come back to the market? Of course, it was difficult. Eight years is a very significant period. The market has changed the participants have changed. There are new trends. One of them is ESG, which is not presented here 
at the same level than global. But of course, it's an inevitable trend, and we understand that. Yes, it was difficult to return. We analyzed the market. We analyzed international experience. And in the first half of the year, we, entered, uh, we returned to the market, and it was successful. Thanks to the market participants, they were expecting us. And uh, the second factor of our success is that we had a loan with a very low preferential rate. And of course, green bonds became a tool which attracted attention of the market, uh, which is on demand. And the interest rate is very low as well. I will dwell on that later, probably. But uh, it was a very interesting new tool for us. Second question about alternatives. I believe that there were no alternatives because I believe that in our case, bonds using the stock exchange mechanisms is the most transparent tool allowing to borrow at the market cost with minimal risks. Maria, could I ask you another two questions? You said that you have a plan of borrowing this year, and uh, the it's 400 billion. You have borrowed already 115 billion, but you continue. Does it mean that Moscow plans to be present at the market, or there will be another uh, break for eight years? Yes, we have plan of uh, 400 billion, as it was said. But as David demonstrated in his presentation this year, the uh, regional income indicators are very good and the industries are recovering we can see the growth that is why we are not rushing now we will enter the market depending on the budget needs it's not borrowing for borrowing we will base on the income level which means you don't have commitment to enter the market every eight years or two years uh, for example ministry of finances thinks uh, that uh, Euro, Euro bonds are necessary every year. I would agree with all from all the points of view. Yes, this is correct, taking into account that from time to time we need these funds, we need borrowing, and we need, have to be present at the market permanently because we build the curve of interaction with market participants. And now we analyze ways to organize this work Despite our co we are different uh, from our colleagues uh, from the Ministry of Finance, I believe that our presence at the market will be there to a certain extent. And second question, once again, Timur Maksimov said that green bonds is uh, fashion, more fashion. Does it mean that Moscow is very fashionable, the most fashionable region? Very tricky question. As I have said, after this break, after this pause, we prepared our entry into the market and we analyzed international practices. And uh, international markets show that the demand for sustainable financing tools is more than supply. It's probably, we can debate about that, but uh, analytics say that there could be such effect, such impact as greenium. Yes, it's possible to borrow for green projects with a lower interest rate. That is why we decided to try this tool, to test it. And um, I might say that it attracted market. We borrowed at the rate which is 20 points lower than we expected. It's very difficult to say, was it greenium? effect or it was accumulated effect related to the fact that we were not at the market for a long time but this tool was very efficient for us i believe that in our case it's not only fashion or trend it's a possibility to finance green projects in moscow applying a lower rate maria has mentioned greenium effect and uh, if you analyze global practice you can see that that is why I would recommend to focus your attention on this effect and to learn everything about it, because I believe it will be dominating 
Next year, Russia is a little bit behind, is a little bit lagging. But it's a global trend, and I believe that this gap will soon be overcome. I would like to give the floor to Alexei Rudenko and ask him, how, what is the attitude of investor to regional borrowers? And if possible, please answer the, another question, which is quite a complicated one, because starting from 98, we do not, didn't have any defaults on the regional level, and hopefully we will not have any in the future. Mainly it is supported by having federal government, which in this other case is supports regions in complex times, and it's uh, <coughs> proof that this help is coming and it's always timely. The question is, uh, do investors estimate regional uh, loaners as a quasi-sovereign? Is it a correct uh, estimation? Alexander, thank you so much for the question. First of all, I would like to get back to the previous discussion about green bonds. To my mind, tomorrow, has uh, arrived after the green bonds of Moscow were deployed. The element of hype turned into regular practice and we saw new deals after that. And now this greenium effect is being formed. We will see it in the future. It's early to analyze it. We do not have so much issuances and so much investors who could uh, show us this practice. As we have more issuances, we'll have more assets which will be formed. The culture of investment in such bonds will be uh, forming and we will be able to analyze the curves, the curves of uh, Moscow, plain vanilla, classical bonds, e.g. and they have to be bigger, they have to be more numerous to understand this effect and to have a possibility to calculate it. As for the question which was asked directly, let's discuss this topic. In general, I do share these logics. Mainly, the majority of the investment community is also agreeing that in the current realities and the current uh, coordinates of uh, the Russian Federation, default of a subject is very, very unprobable. If we see the budget code, it's not, nothing is said about that. Uh, it's not said that the sub subjects of various levels are responsible for each other. At the same time, uh, as we are all investors, both Russian and international, are looking at the uh, Russian budget system as a single mechanism. And obviously, if one of the elements of this mechanism is failing, we can generally ask uh, a question about the general sustainability of this uh, mechanism. And Timur has answered that uh, subjects of Russian Federation, Federation are supported and will be supported. But obviously, we cannot relax here. We have to keep working and create new tools which would unload somehow our regional uh, budgets. One of such tools is the infrastructure budget credits. Uh, yesterday, uh, together with the uh, uh, Central Bank uh, and uh, Domerev, we uh, showed the infrastructure bond to the community, which are aimed at finance and social infrastructure projects of the residential infrastructure, where the debt of a subject is not a direct one, it's through a guarantee, which means relative uh, participation of a subject. We hope it will, be, it will be the first issuance on 10 billion rubles, but if this tool works, it will help to <coughs> finance a social infrastructure uh, outside the budget. As for the subjects of, of the ones who are buying the bonds of subjects, the subjects have their own special place on shelf of various bonds. And here we have to look at uh, regulatory uh, tools. The main uh, buyers are 
institutional investors, uh, conservative uh, banks and uh, managing companies who are financed through with the reserves. If we're speaking about banks, the subjects, contrary to corporate loaners, have reduced uh, risk uh, weight in calculation of market uh, risk and credit risk, uh, c uh, comparing on uh, the subjects is 20 percent the credit risk, and uh, as for corporations, it's about 65 percent, of course. But banks can uh, offer better profitability, so with the same ratings and comparing with corporations, these bonds are uh, better placed, and the appetite of investors is better. So if we unite these two questions, uh, probable default of the subjects and the ones who are buying from uh, so the uh, subjects. There is also an answer. For example, uh, the Moscow bonds are traded on like 50 uh, points on the secondary market. And to my mind, uh, there is no award for the credit because most probably it's about the uh, regulatory aspect. <coughs> It's the most uh, profitable things. That's basically money. Uh, it's uh, high uh, liquidity assets for the bank, and obviously the subjects who have low uh, credit rating, like uh, for example with rating triple B plus, is placed in about 200 base uh, points. Uh, and the corporation with the same rating can calculate uh, can be calculated at best on 300 350 so the cre credit risk is lower for the subject so if i understand you correctly sergey so to say investors uh, also include some sort of mechanism for the region to avoid a uh, default and the second uh, aspect is the regulatory support is making these uh, bonds attractive for the investors. If we're speaking about regulatory aspect, we're speaking about banks because mainly it's, uh, it's from the going from bank. If we're, do I understand you correctly? Absolutely. And so we can say that once more, from a point of view of banks, uh, uh, <coughs> a tool with liquidity is better than without uh, uh, liquidity. Uh, so bond is more comfortable for a bank and for regional owners. It's one more indication that still the demand exists. You can take it from the market and use it for financing both the regional financing, which can reduce the debt. Uh, uh, from the regions as far as I know if the guarantee is taken the coefficient is 0 0.5 I cannot answer you quite specifically about that we should ask colleagues from the rating agency what I would like to say here is really important you're absolutely correct uh, you absolutely correctly said the only thing we're missing this year is the loaners so the measures of support which were taken from the uh, government, uh, uh, the restoration of uh, economy, which was proved by the World Bank. We do observe it, and it all led to uh, <coughs> growth of that, uh, especially for those uh, who have, for those regions who have export components. If not Moscow, we would have two loaners with the total volume of about 20 billion uh, rubles uh, moscow was uh, 150 totally 135 so initially when we were speaking about the plans on budget for the beginning of the year we were expecting a record in the market and in plans concluding moscow we could uh, go to uh, digit which is much bigger uh which be a record because the previous year was 256 billion for the moment these expectations are not uh, seen yet we will look at the second half of the year and uh, hopefully we'll have uh, the deals and on the deficit of loaners which we observe now there will be a possibility to uh, make uh, good deals and i would like to add what alexei said is the only 
legal basis, so to say this, for this uh, guarantee of uh, the government for the subject, because we do not have it anywhere in, in the regulatory aspects of uh, the uh, central bank. Uh, all the subjects have uh, similar risks, so uh, that means it's an implicit aspect because all the subjects are equally uh, precious for the government. There is a, yes, there is a liberal attitude from the bank regulator. And I would like to ask a question to Yelena Anisimova about her view and the view of ACRA agency for the regional finances. And before answering this quite global uh, question, I would like to ask a bit more specific uh, thing. This implicit guarantee uh, Timur was speaking about and Alexei was speaking about, do you uh, uh, use it in the calculation of ratings, so you're just based on the financial indexes or some general things. So to say, I would like to answer briefly, for us, credit rating uh, of the subject is the credit rating of its own uh, creditability. <clears throat> so separated from uh, the aspect this, uh, it's not a possible um, help, it's a constant help uh, via transfers and uh, budget credits. We bear it uh, in mind, but we cannot say that the credit quality of all the subjects is equal. Yes, that's the difference uh, from the uh, Bank of Russia, yes. So could you say, speak about the view of uh, Accra Agency to, I would like to give you a clicker. Uh, before I switch to my presentation, uh, I would like <coughs> to refer to the issue of development of a G uh, topic. A few days ago, I was submerged in the methodology of uh, providing ratings to the world uh, financial centers. So involvement uh, of a city in ESG uh, topic and the level of green market is one of uh, important indexes which is used for calculation of uh, the ratings. That's why developing the green agenda, we are contributing to the fact that in the future we will probably rise Moscow in this rating. Now switching to our view of uh, the subjects uh, and their fulfill fulfillment of their incomes this year. Uh, contrary to that, I used non-consolidated data. I do not think we will contradict a lot uh, because the income and the budget of subject non-consolidated is about 85% if we're speaking about uh, the taxes and uh, fiscal, non-fiscal uh, income. It's about that level of uh, consolidated budgets of the Russian Federation. What do we see this year? For 1st of September, or the 31st of August, that's a, uh, and, uh, data of the authorities of Russian Federation, we see growth of 24%. Uh, which is quite impress impressive <coughs> because uh, expenses grew only by 4% and uh, totally we have the profit of about over 800 uh, billion uh, rubles comparing to the deficit of the pr previous uh, year, 174 billion. So it's, uh, common to exclude Moscow from analysis when we're speaking about the subjects of the Russian Federation because Moscow was a big subject of the Russian Federation and as within uh, this subject a small volatility can influence uh, the general view of the system. So if we st uh, see the subjects uh, without Moscow, we see uh, more or less uh, the same indexes you can see uh, the growth by 23% uh, and we have profited of uh, 712 uh, rubles uh, contrary to the previous year deficit of 13 billion rubles. Previ our own uh, income uh, monthly increase, uh, we're speaking about f fiscal, non-fiscal, there is a bit complex and the terminology of the budget code is a bit different. I will get back to presentation. The fiscal and fiscal income almost every month is uh, over 
not only the previous year, but uh, even the year of 2019, which is really important for us. Value added tax so shows uh, <clears throat> significant growth, uh, a monthly, and uh, it overcomes the indexes which we had both in 2020 and 2019. My presentation is a bit small. I think it will be easier for you to walk, uh, to look behind my back. I would like to show the. Uh, major growths in the most uh, active spheres, uh, but after c looking at that, I realized that metallurgy has grown uh, incomparably, if we consider it, and uh, in compare with other industries and sub-industries. This is the in uh, data from the taxes. We have, <coughs> we didn't, uh, that's the freshest data we have, and you see for the previous years, for 2018, 19, and 20, you can see the date for uh, the 1st of July, that's half a year, and the green, uh, uh, what you see on, on the, uh, it's, that's the five-month uh, data for the year. We see significant growth there. This is the price, uh, metal price growth, and also there is a list of entities where the growth of income, both fiscal and not fiscal, but probably the revenue tax, and these are the entities with the most significant growth. If you can see that it's Lipetsk region, Vologda region, Belgorod region, etc. I double checked these figures. Am I correct? Is it two, really 200 or just 24? It looks like something like it looks fantastic, but it's real in comparison with the last years, especially. Am I right, Galina? Despite the fact that the growth is really significant, entities of the Russian Federation are not correcting their plans for revenue. If we analyze the intensity or actually non-intensity of their plannings, over the period which I am analyzing, they have uh, amended the plans by 6%, despite the fact that they executed their budget plans by the 1st of August, according to the data of non-consolidated budgets, non-operating budget, but the real report, uh, it's based on real reports, it's 67% over the last seven months in comparison with expectations. Probably we could be more optimistic, especially taking into account the fact that the revenue tax was executed by almost 80% in comparison with expectations. Entities are different uh, in their approach, and they are quite conservative in planning, and we do not hurry to be optimistic about that. We do not correct the non-repayable revenue we expect it according to the forecast, in accordance with the legislation of each entity of the Russian Federation. And in the beginning of the year, when we started forming our plan, we did not amend that. Why? Because our opinion hasn't changed. Our current plan is not different in comparison with the entity's plan. The difference is a number of billion of rubles. If we could be optimistic, hypothetically, we could grow up to 15% in comparison to the last year indicators. I beg your pardon. Could you... Uh, there are some noises. C could you please a little bit change the position of your microphone? Yes, is it fine? We take into account the fact that the taxation changes and, and especially in metallurgy, that's why our optimistic forecast is still optimistic. It doesn't become the basic scenario. As for the support measures, 
We were talking about these measures a lot today, plus 7 to 15 percent. It's not a measure of support, it's one of the positive factors which ha impacts the budget this year. Approximately 335 billion rubles, this is the amount of loans to restore, the, uh, to repay the commercial debt. About 200 billion rubles of loans, and this is uh, indicated as lower than the last year, but in comparison to 2019, this growth is significant. As for the non-repayable revenues, we try to evaluate that, how the transfers would behave if there were no pandemic. This is our basis for evaluation of the positive investment to the budgets of the entities and 1.5 trillion rubles is a positive impact for the budgets of constituent entities this year. One quarter of the commercial debt will be restructurized. The share of this debt will be about 10% of tax and non-tax revenue. And of course, the repayment of debts will also incre increase and improve. We expect that the credit ratings will change some they will grow, they will improve for some constituted entities. Some entities still apply a big number of short-term banking loans, which actually have a negative impact on the quality. I can say that it's equal for all the constituted entities, taking into account Moscow region. We can see that restructurizing is something that is very on a very high level in Moscow, I don't know if uh, what about municipalities, uh, it has a very high credit ranking and uh, the repayment schedule is performed in full and for example uh, it can lead to increasing of credit rating in comparison with uh, for example Republic of Mordovia uh, which covers its uh, banking debt thanks to these sources, thanks to this finance in Mordovia, uh, will repay loans. I don't know how the municipalities uh, will behave in this situation, but hypothetically, Mordovia uh, could have the budget debt like Tatarstan. There is one thing I would like to mention. As a rating agency, we cannot but take into account the tax burden. I'm speaking about infrastructure, budget loans and about guarantees which will be provided by entities within the program uh, which is financed by different organizations. Probably the growth of tax burden will have negative impact for some entities and uh, this restructurization will balance it and the rating will be maintained at the same level. Nevertheless, we understand that currently infrastructure, budget loans and uh, DOM RF, program house uh, R RF, it's development of economy, it's a long-term effect on each entity. We do not consider that as positive effect because we cannot calculate this effect for tax and uh, non-tax income. That is why we are careful. We are very careful about these evaluations, and we do not announce that. That would probably be it. Our opinion about the entities. I will be happy to answer your questions. Everything is developing. And uh, these pictures which you described, the measures taken by the federal government, they support budgets to achieve this stadium, uh, this uh, state of sustainability. And uh, they have uh, time to think about future financing and how they can use this debt market. Yes, it's uh, 
an attempt to resolve the problems, uh, probably not very, not, 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 we shouldn't force them to do that, but uh, yeah, it should be softer. We did not worry about this situation. In March or April, we paid attention to the consequences. We were monitoring the loan qualities of entities and the changes of these qualities are different for every entity, but the situation is almost smooth, I would say, is more or less equal. When revenues go down for all the entities, we're not talking about oil producing entities, uh, which of course suffered a lot last year, and it influenced their budget, but they had some reserved reserves which allowed them to maintain the operations, but when we speak about simultaneous changes in the system for ratings in the context of national scale, I would say that uh, there are less vulnerability because all of the entities move the same direction. Probably some regions uh, could expect the could, could expect a higher rating. I would like to ask another question to David. David, can you hear us? David. Um, uh... David. Do you know any example of any com country uh, with the federal si system where uh, they have uh, so this implicit uh, guarantee to support uh, implicit guarantee to support entities uh, support regions? Do you have any example of any country? Well, I would say that such an implicit guarantee is 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 fairly common, uh, certainly not ubiquitous, um, uh, but, um, but I think in, in, in several countries uh, there is um, a, it's a fine balance, I think, which, between ensuring um, full fiscal, um, you know, autonomy uh, of the regions uh, or the de devolved um, uh, entities um, and uh, uh, also um, providing a, um, uh, a you know uh, a, a, a last uh, a last support uh, in the case of severe shocks or crises. Um, I, I wouldn't uh, probably uh, be in a position to, to give um, exact examples because it's a because it's a fine line. Um, it's a, a, a it, you, one can get into legalistic discussions as to where the uh, where, where the uh, law uh, stops and, and and common practice begins. Um, however, um, you know, having having uh, just um, served uh, uh, time in, in Turkey in, in Ankara, um, you know, I think there is also uh, either um, an implicit or, or actually often an explicit guarantee from the, the Treasury um, for uh, municipal uh, lending in that case. Now, uh, explicit guarantees are not required. Um, but um, can, can be can be common. Uh, uh, so um, yes, I think there's there's um, several different practices. Um, uh, Fred, I, I I don't have a, a very complete list, uh, but it is something that uh, of course the bank, the different country uh, teams operating in the banks work on uh, a lot, and uh, and and uh, we um, uh, we can of course gather that type of knowledge and. Uh, and discuss in more detail at a, at a future forum. Thank you. Thank you very much. If we summarized what David said, implicit uh, implicit insurance uh, guarantee is the best pra one of the best practices in other countries. Uh, in case of uh, shocks and uh, disasters or crisis, uh, government is responsible for regions uh, in situations like the pandemic of COVID-19. It's obvious that uh, the central government authorities will support the regions. It's not something very special for Russia. We might say that so we just learn from best practices, global practices. When Maria 
mentioned the fact that Moscow returned to the bond market, and she said that it was quite difficult to restore a relationship with investments because some of them have forgotten what is Moscow, what are the risks, what is the budget of Moscow. And of course, here was a question how to build communication with investors. And I believe that here we have um, a benchmark, which is the Minister of Finance of the Russian Federation, which over the last year invested a lot of efforts to build the model of communication with the market. And this model proved to be quite successful. I would like to ask Timur Maximov to give us a workshop uh, how to do that, uh, how to communicate with investors. Timur, there is a loan program for the Ministry of Finance. It's quite big but, and it's uh, successfully performed, being successfully per performed. And the remaining sum which has to be uh, loaned is about 500 billion. So uh, comparing to one auction is about 30 billion. So in the last five, six auctions, the Ministry of Finance is depositing about uh, 100 billion. Uh, does it mean that uh, in October uh, the program of loans can be fulfilled uh, totally and in November and December the Ministry of Finance will not loan anymore? I would like to specify that we generally need uh, on the auction about uh, 40 billion on the approved uh, loan program which we have today, but uh, we as the Federal uh, Ministry of Finance have certain room for uh, maneuver. Uh, as it has been concur correctly said, the situation in Moscow is better than expected in the number of subjects, uh, not only in Moscow and the federal uh, government is also in the same situation. We see the situation with income is better than it was expected. And generally, we hope that such dynamics can allow us to fully uh, not perform the program uh, especially bearing in mind that now the cycle is in such phase that depositing on peak is not quite uh, preferable. So you suggest you are going on the way of Moscow, the limit is 400 and depositing is 115 and Ministry of Finance has to deposit about half a trillion so probably there will be the less uh, sum of money deposited. Uh, less, uh, uh, yes, well, the first uh, reduction has been made uh, about 900 billion due to the remainings which were accumulated if we'll have a pos if we have a possibility to reduce the program even more i think it should be done because i would like to say what uh, once more the face for depositing is not the the best for the moment thank you so much i think that's a wonderful uh, answer to quite a tricky question and I would like to get back to the topic of green bonds and uh, to ask Maria to tell a bit about the issuance of the green bonds apart from uh, uh, only Moscow did it is it uh, simpler or it's more complex than uh, complicated uh, than the regular bond everybody says it's different but what's the point thank you Alexander for us, uh, issuance of green bonds is quite a natural thing uh, to my mind because we do implement a lot of green projects in the city. This is a construction of uh, the metro, a change of uh, the buses for electro buses. We implement projects on separation of uh, rubbish. Uh, ecological monitoring system and we participate in a pilot project association of economical development on for the cities and for the public entities generally as a city we are following the uh, goal of sustainable development we have a big number of projects in this dimension that's why this step for us was really natural uh, in general I think that if we consider the structure of budgets of the Russian Federation uh, generally everything is aimed at sustainable development that's why for public entities and subjects of the Russian Federation and municipal municipalities, that's a step towards uh, sustainable development and it's a correct one. 
I think uh, this step will be uh, taken in the near future. We generally analyze the practice how these tools can be implemented within uh, the Russian legislation. We have uh, the principle of uh, one uh, uh, window, so to say, in the budget. Uh, so the target tool of financing as a subject of Russian Federation cannot be introduced. That's why from the Russian point of view, this is a classical bonds. So what's the point of uh, greenness of that? Greenness is added by uh, preparation of the concepts of projects for green financing. There's a separate document where all projects are reflected in detail. Uh, where money will be sent uh, with ecological effects inter alia. Uh, and this uh, project uh, as a concept is being verified. Inter independent agency verifies this document. In our case, it was the Expertera agency, and they were verifying our concept on the standard of International Association of Capital Markets in the world. There is a number of standards working for sustainable doc, uh, standard we uh, selected this one as the mostly widespread worldwide uh, so the concept is being verified and if it is successful this tool is introduced in the database of uh, green uh, bonds of the international association of capital market generally we analyzed it among the world's cities, we are in top 20 among those who uh, place such uh, <coughs> tools. Worldwide is quite a rare tool, uh, and what should be uh, considered by all the uh, subjects of the Russian Federation, issuance of such a bond uh, presupposes uh, the annual uh, report that uh, the money was uh, spent in the in the necessary volume and the ecological effects were achieved. Separately, uh, I would like to say that uh, <clears throat> it uh, contributes to the standard of uh, uh, the Bank of Russia, where uh, the base is development, developing, <coughs> and we, would, uh, we wanted to tune our tools to have it in all the standards, Russian and international ones. Uh, we are absolutely green and it already gave uh, the result in the market and the verificator is the remaining the same so it's taking a responsibility to make it annually well generally we are taking the responsibility that we are implementing these projects and for that, that we will achieve the necessary ecologic effects and the goal of verificator uh, verificator is to justify our conclusions and uh, achievability of the announced goals. And another question you have s uh, stated that there is Russian uh, practice and there is international practice. And uh, mm, sometimes on the level of prospect, uh, there is uh, <coughs> an inclusion of such thing that if the greenness is not fulfilled, it, uh, the bonds can be uh, purchased, uh, bought back. Can Moscow, uh, could, could it have, uh, have happened with Moscow, or you were confident uh, uh, that you were, would succeed? We were confident. It's a c construction of a uh, big uh, uh, ring line of metropolitan and uh, of metro and change of buses for electric buses. These projects are implemented not for the first year, and we invest uh, money annually on that. And obviously, uh, the money which we borrowed uh, would be uh, sent for these tools. That's why there was no uh, big uh, problem for us. And uh, Accra Agency isn't Accra Agency is planning to play a role of verificator of green bonds. We are not planning. We are doing it already. We have methodology. Uh, to uh, have uh, ESG uh, estimations and verification of green bonds and as for such uh, complicated uh, nuance when in case if by the result of verification it is discovered that money were uh, invested in some wrong manner in this case there was there is a possibility that these bonds have to be a preliminary Paid. It's exclusively Russian practice, and there are uh, some attempts to change the legislation for this harsh uh, condition not to be 
in the documents because it sounds quite scary for colleagues somehow because in case of something you will have to pay for the bonds preliminary first of all as far as i know such cases uh, as far as i know such cases were not in place and uh, there is a discussion on going away from that thank you so much and if we take an example of moscow without any extra conditions i would like to better to refer to international practice where it is men, uh, met somehow i would, wouldn't say it's a general practice but there is a general stream where such bonds are issued yes alexander uh, this rule uh, by its logic is not not bad if we say that we need some economic effects in uh, Issuing that if we understand that the tool is sustainable, there should be some responsibility behind that. Yes, Alexei, I uh, would like to uh, say a few words about this topic. Well, globally, in the international practice, uh, there is uh, the practice of a single cash share, but including the international practice and within the framework of working with Moscow on issues uh, on issuing the green bonds what Moscow has done in the Russian Federation is generally a country uh, similar to the world practice in Russian practice and the uh, uh, corporate segment and the standard system uh, by the rule of Bank of Russia 706 uh, this option exists but it's not mandatory if the emittent wants to place the green obligations and see in title in the prospect that this issuance is green it is working at the same time uh, uh, they are placing it without uh, is, uh, without identification in the prospect and I would like to ask you a question also. If we see, like, uh, next year, 2022, do you see the green obligation, uh, green bonds will be traded lower than the regular ones, or it will take some time? <coughs> well, you see, you need to consider the basic economic rules why in the Western Europe uh, there is a uh, a green effect is a sustainable one because the demand exceeds the offer uh, today in Russia we still do not have uh, the demand in full and uh, the demand is uh, not for not only because investors do not want to invest uh, but also because there is uh, insufficient volume of assets this effect is pro possible, but uh, the effect is possible uh, parallel to grow in market and investment uh, and uh, culture in, for such projects. Thank you so much. We have almo already come to a conclusion, and we have some time for Q&A session. And uh, if you have a question, feel free to raise your hand, and Camille will come up to you with the microphone. Distinguished, distinguished participants, uh, I would like to congratulate you with this holiday, Galina Vladimirovna from Belgorod region. We, well, this holiday I would like to say that we have certain problems which we face today after the check for inspection from the federal uh, budget uh, and we would like to, I would like to <coughs> say a bit of uh, negative uh, things and uh, in Belgorod region there was no need in the loans it was justified by the remainings in the regional budget for the beginning of the year uh, it is uh, built on certain wording and the remains for the beginning of the year, which to our mind and to the mind of, uh, by legislation, contradicts to the requirements of the budgetary code. And the second outcome of such provisions is that we had to borrow uh, with the monthly deficit and not by the deficit which is uh, 
in this market. By our policies, we were uh, borrowing below the level of uh, planning payments, planned payments for the debt oblig uh, obligations. And all our bonds were, uh, all our borrowings were covered only by the income of the budget, and we were using the credit for recrediting for lower market. The exclusion was the 20th year we, when we had to have some extra borrowings, and this year, having such a positive dynamics, we refused uh, the borrowings and from borrowings, and we are looking for uh, the future. We hope that in 2020 we'll do the same. We wrote a letter to the Minister of Finance on clarification of this methodology. Uh, how we can forecast that and what uh, is the source that we have to uh, use for uh, the financing of deficit. For the moment, we do not have the answer, and we would like to, that's why I would like to point out this issue, that we would have a normal question, normal, normal answer for that, uh, judging by Federation. This source is not forecasted anyhow, it's not included in the methodology and the change in the remaining is uh, arithmetics and even the federation could borrow there are now some basics or some limits to use uh, the funds which you have at the beginning of the year at the same time you have an opportunity to use these funds over the normative deficit this is the problem i would like all the entities to be aware about that probably this problem is common for us timur could you comment on that uh, we need a copy of the letter which uh, you mentioned and uh, we will study this issue dear colleagues we have time for one more question please Thank you very much. Good afternoon, distinguished colleagues. Ulyanovsk region, the acting Minister of Finance, Natalia Bruhano. Probably the question is to Minister of Finance. Do you plan any change of approach, approach in the budget code for the regions? Because we see that an approach is very simple. Yes, uh, there is a level of debt, the level of uh, revenue, income. Uh, and uh, the sustainability level, which is uh, low, middle and high. But the banks take into account the period of this debt, market debt, budget debt, they divide that. And sometimes rating of an entity could be a very high from the point of view of agency, but for the Minister of Finance it will be more pessimistic. In this regard, do you plan to change an approach to estimate debt sustainability of the entities? Thank you very much. You probably know that we have categorization. It's implemented, uh, but for the second year it's not applied. And uh, this it was the decision of the government uh, which led to the inner discussion. Shall we apply that? And uh, I will not announce any decisions made. We are just discussing that. If it's necessary or not. If it's necessary, there are in which cases we shall apply that. After having the decision, we will have consultations with the entities' representatives. Of course, uh, I agree with you that uh, it's very tough approach on the one hand, but uh, on the other hand, during these two years, without this categorization, nothing changed. And the question is how, what to do in the future? Shall we change the approach? And this is what we are doing. And the very last question. Good afternoon, distinguished colleagues. Congratulations on the Day of Financial Experts. I have a methodological question to the Minister of Finance, or maybe two questions. Uh, recommendations on the debt policy are dated 2015. I mean uh, the ones which are published on the website of the Ministry. Does Minister of Finance plan to develop this methodology? And uh, we and my, me and my colleagues, we have many uh, questions in this regard because over the, six, over the past six years, uh, a lot of things changed. Uh, will there be 
updating of this policy on the website of the Ministry of Finance. And the last question, in 2022, will there be a normative adopted for registration of bonds issued by the Ministry of Finance? Because it was announced, but due to the pandemic, due to the crisis, it was, it was postponed. And uh, from the point of view of the uh, World Bank or the Ministry of Finance, how it will be controlled? Uh, will there be new legislation? Uh, because the previous uh, law is not in force anymore. Thank you very much. We have discussed it with you many times and taken the opportunity, I would say that, According, uh, in regards of the methodological recommendations, we agreed one year ago that we will do that. The document is already prepared, but there are some in internal procedures. It will be published on the website very soon. It not will be the normative, just recommendations how we work and how we believe it to be the best way for work for the entities and key areas. Uh, yes, uh, we decided not to publish this document. Uh, by the way, uh, the accounting chamber also drew our attention to this fact. What we did, what we agreed uh, with the accounting chamber, we have a very big document, uh, which is a joint document, uh, key areas of taxation, customs, and other fiscal policy. We will add the debt sector. We will describe the principles of approach, how we see the operation of these segments, how it looks from our point of view. And I believe that you will take these recommendations as guidance. Unfortunately, I cannot hear the speaker because he doesn't use microphone. If you talk uh, about the agreement with the Ministry of Finance, no, it's a different situation because it's not obligatory document. Uh, we decided to prepare this document, but uh, you are obliged. You it's an, another situation. For us, it's basis for, of the budget law. It's a middle-term focus. And the third question was about registry of uh, mission. As far as I understand, uh, the Central Bank of Russia is responsible for such a, a registration. Unfortunately, I cannot hear the speaker because the speaker doesn't use microphone. Uh, this question is uh, very close to the issue of differentiation of uh, entities. We will decide uh, about the categories of debt sustainability because for some categories it's obligatory, it's mandatory, but for other categories it's not. Yes, but we it depends on uh, the when this categorization is in force. When I, I cannot answer you this question because it's under this, it's subject of discussion at the moment. Thank you very much, distinguished colleagues. We are out of time. Thank you very much for your participation. I believe uh, that debt sustainability of the entities of the Russian Federation will only improve. They will enter the market, and in two or three years, there will always be a place of discussion at Moscow Financial Forum. Thank you very much, and I wish you good health.